Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. Kali Linux 2020.1 has just been released two hours ago and I was quite looking forward to that release so I thought I'd give you a short video on a feature overview and I also give you upgrade instructions from 2019.4 at the end of the video. So if you're just here for the upgrade, just skip up to the end of the video. I'll leave a time frame in the uh, description below. Let's first have a look at the summary of the changes. There is now a non-root user by default. There is now also a Kali single installer image. We'll get to that in a second. And Kali NetHunter is now rootless and there has been improvements made to the theme and to the Kali undercover mode. And there are a couple of new tools which we will cover in the next slides. So one of the biggest changes probably is that uh, the default root user account has been uh, deprecated. If you have installed Kali in the past, you know that the default uh, login was root and the password was Tor. This user is not existing anymore at all. So now the default account is a unprivileged user account. Um, so you need to use sudo to execute uh, root commands from now on. That was actually a reason I have recommended ParrotSec OS to beginners in the past because ParrotSec also comes with a lower privileged user per default, which makes it a little bit more secure if you don't know uh, about Linux permissions and what the root user is and how it works. The new default user is Kali Kali. So Kali will be our new default user and it will be an unprivileged user account. I really like this change. It makes it a little bit more approachable for newbies uh, who don't know how root works and it makes it definitely more secure for new users. So I like this change. Next on the list, Kali is now a single installer image. What does that mean? In the past, you had to download a separate image for every desktop environment that you wanted. Like you, if you wanted GNOME, you had to download the GNOME image. If you wanted XFCE, which is the new default, uh, you had to download the XFCE image. And if you wanted, I think maybe they had LFCE or something like this. I'm not sure. A couple of other ones, you had to download this particular image. That has changed now. The list is much shorter at this moment so now you can only download the installer the kali live image the net installer and the pre-configured virtual machine images for virtualbox and vmware that does not mean you don't have a choice anymore because now you are able to select the desktop environment that you want during the installation i think that step made definitely sense and uh, it's a great addition to or a great change uh, to this new installer image. Another big change, in my opinion, is that you're now able to select tools at install time. And the default image contains Kali Desktop XFCE, which is the new default since 2019.4, and also the Kali Tools default packages. What it means, you can read that on the Kali page. There is written which packages those uh, are or those include. And um, I think that makes sense because you can now go ahead and if you don't want to install any tools and you just want to install Kali, you can do that and you can start from a clean slate and install just the tools that you want. Because if there are lots of tools in Kali that you never use, you just don't need to install them. You can just have it a little bit cleaner. So I think this is a nice change as well. Uh, this is how it looks like during the installation. So as you can see per default, the XFCE desktop environment is selected and also the generic meta packages, Kali Linux and the default uh, recommended tools. And you can see that you can uh, install like a large package. You can install, I'll just go here with the mouse quickly. You can install it large, you can install everything and you can install tools by purpose. So I'm really looking forward to look into that and uh, check out uh, what you can do there. You can also install the top 10 tools, which is pretty awesome. So you can keep your Kali installation a little bit more lean uh, than it might be with the default installer uh, in the past. Next up, new themes. So there is a new GNOME theme with dark and light mode that probably will make some of you guys very happy who don't like XFCE. Then there are also new new tool icons and new menu icons. So I think that change was quite necessary because some of the 
icons started to look a bit dated so it cannot do any harm to make it look a little bit more updated and a little bit more modern so i think that's a great change as well there's also an updated graphical kali linux installer which we will look into in uh, a different video when we will actually go through the new installation routine and there are also a couple of new wallpapers we also got a few new tools and i don't actually know any of those one is cloud enum which is probably some kind of cloud enumeration tool as the name suggests then email harvester i don't know if it's uh somehow associ associated to the harvester which is i think a subdomain enumeration tool or something like that uh i might got that wrong but i don't know uh, probably some email harvesting thing then a php tool which i don't know and sherlock i also don't know that and splinter which i also don't know but we'll look into that in a upcoming video where we will have a look at the new tools and why they are included and the last thing before we look at the upgrade procedure is python 2 reached end of life so that was long announced now python 2 really reached end of life and everybody should be using python 3 and i hope all the new tools will also come in python 3 which is great so those were the changes and now we'll have a look on how to upgrade kali linux 2019.4 to 2020.1 all right, we are here on my Kali 2019.4 and we are going to upgrade it to 2020.1. The process should be fairly quick and easy. Uh, there are official instructions on the Kali.org website, which I will leave in the description below. So you can also go ahead and copy and paste the instructions because the first instruction is quite long. So we do sudo and I'm just gonna paste that here. That's adding uh, the proper repository to our apt and now we can go ahead and do a full upgrade which we'll do with just clear it up uh, let me make this a little bit bigger we do sudo apt update and uh, double and sudo apt tech y full tech upgrade and let's see what it's pulling there there we go and uh, the upgrade is running and we'll be back in a second when that is done. Okay, the installation just finished. Now we are going to do a reboot with this very long and weird command. You can copy and paste it from the official instructions that are in the uh, description below. So we run this and we quickly uh, reboot and check if the upgrade was successful. Let's see. All right, there we go, it's restarted and we can check if the upgrade was successful by doing grab version, version, etc, and I think OS release. And we are on 2020.1. All right guys, so I hope you like this little feature overview of Kali Linux 2020.1 and the upgrade instructions as well. And if you did, uh, you know what to do. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit the notification bell so you get informed when I release a new video, which I will do on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye.